everybody, it's Jeff. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss the most rare Buffalo nickels you could buy under $500. My goal is essentially to say, if you're gonna buy a single Buffalo nickel for say a typeset, which one is the best one to buy if your budget's under $500? Or maybe you want to invest in Buffalo nickels long-term, which ones are the shortest in supply or the most rare compared to others all for $500? And you might ask, well, why should we care? Aren't all Buffalo nickels essentially worth what they're worth today? And I wanna go back in time, just five years to January, 2016 and show you why that is not necessarily the case, that prices move differently. What I did in January, 2016 gray sheet here is I hand selected all the Buffalo nickels that had a $500 plus or minus 20 bucks or so gray sheet bid and compare that to the gray sheet bid today. And what you'll notice here, looking at the January of 2016 column to the January of 2021, is there are some drastic differences in the change. In other words, if you were astute enough to buy the 1919D in a Mint State 60 gray back then, you would have paid $460, and today that's worth $650. Whereas if you bought the 28D in Mint State 65 for 500 bucks, today that's worth 400. You can see the first one increased 41%, well, the next one decreased 20. So there is smart purchases and not so smart. And in my opinion, I think how the future will evolve is people will pay closer attention to the population reports as we've now encountered a time where most of the coins that are worth $500 or more have probably been graded. There's going to be a less of a gain in terms of population growth from here forward, in my opinion, especially on the Buffalo Nickel series. So this is a list of the most rare in terms of total population of PCGS in the grade and higher. And it's amazing how drastic the difference is. You'll see on the next slide, the bottom of the scale has total population in the 4,000s compared to, for example, the 27 Philly and a Mint State 66 plus has just 87 total or 50 in the grade with 37 higher. Now, what I think most people have focused on is the total mintage. In terms of, you look at the mintage column and these are all fairly high mintage years. Whereas on the least rare, you got lower mintage years. Most of them are probably 10 million or under. And I think there's definite legitimacy to that, but I also think you have to focus in on how many have been graded at this point? How many were saved in this high grade? And my two favorites by far are the 1914 Philly and the 23 Philly. I think I love these grades for many reasons, not only because the mintage isn't extreme for a Philly, as you can see, the 36 Philly had 119 million minted, the 1914 had just 20. It was less saved in good condition. 1913 was the first year of the Buffalo Nickel. Uh, the 13 Philly is the one almost everyone saved. It was a new series, a lot of excitement. By the time you got to 1914, less of them were saved, especially in high grade. Uh, this is still a key year in Mint Mark for all collecting styles. For example, if your goal is to collect the entire series uh, year in Mint Mark, you have to buy a 14 Philly. If your goal is to collect just a date set where you collect one of each year. The 14 Philly is probably your uh, coin of choice. If you just are looking for a type set, this would be considered a type two. Uh, so I think there's a lot of reason to see strong demand in the 14 Philly. Mint State 66 is extremely nice grade, but not the highest. So for $515, which is where it's trading today, uh, you could buy a coin with just 229 total in the greater higher. The next, of course, is the 23 Philly. The 20s were a tough year overall, and uh, especially for high-grade coins that were saved. You just don't see them, uh, especially some of the uh, Denver and San Francisco Mint Mark Buffalo Nickels during the 20s were some of the key dates of the series. But I think the 23 Philly is a sleeper and at just 235 total population. As you can see at the top is a 27 Philly, and why I didn't choose that is because of Mint State 66, that is a very plentiful coin, and a 66 plus is certainly a next higher grade by a half a point, but I just don't think it is interesting enough. I personally like the round numbers. And then lastly, I think that 37 uh, from San Francisco is a sleeper. Most people assume uh, there's still a ton of those available, but if 
you have a raw 37S that is good enough to be a mint state 67, you've probably sent it in for grading, which is why I think that could be a sleeper as well uh, in the years ahead. And the other nice thing about the 37S is that fits into the short set collecting style for Buffalo Nichols, where you collect 35 up to 38D. Now let's jump to the least rare here. As you can see at the bottom of this list is a 37D three-legged Buffalo, which of course, has popularity far beyond just the Buffalo nickel collectors uh, being one of the key varieties of the series. But you can see there is 5,800 available, 1,130 in the grade of extra fine 45 with 4,000 better. So this is an awesome coin. I don't necessarily believe it'll go down in value much, but I think the upside is limited in terms of just the sheer availability on the marketplace. And then you kind of scroll through and you can see the next most available. And this is very common amongst all series where the key dates or the key varieties have the highest populations available, but yet their prices remain strong. So I'm not necessarily assuming that these will go down in value because the 13S Type 2 is uh, well known as the key date, even though I think the 26 uh, San Francisco is the true key date. But the 13S Type 2 is popular uh, for a lot of Buffalo nickel collectors and non-Buffalo nickel collectors. They know that is the key date. But you can see there's 1,784 available. Uh, overall, I, I don't think these are necessarily going to go down in value. But personally, I would be looking at buying on the, the most rare slide just before. And then lastly, just an interesting comparison. Bringing in the 37 uh, San Francisco versus the two key date and, and varieties. And you could see just the sheer amount of population difference here. Uh, it takes a lot of collectors to want to buy the key date, key variety compared to the 37S and a Mint State 67 grade, which is an extremely nice grade. So I want to challenge people to think differently about how they go about collecting and maybe look at these populations as I think in the future, we're going to slow down the population growth and therefore uh, I think we'll find today there's coins that are undervalued given the relative rarity and available supply. So thanks for watching. I appreciate if you consider subscribing. Take care.